In this epic narrative of transformation and empowerment, Christy Kennebrew not only leads but inspires a movement that could redefine your perspective on the power of diversity and essence of talent in the tech world. This is not merely just an interview. It's a masterclass in breaking barriers and a vivid tableau of what the future of tech could look like when inclusivity and equity lead the way. Tune in, listen closely, and let the story of Christy Kennebrew inspire you to be an agent of change in this ever-evolving narrative of progress and possibility. Christy, thank you so much for being on Tech is New Black. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so it's uh, I'm excited about this. We were talking about offline how our last time seeing each other in person was Afrotech, not last year, but the year before that when we first met. Yeah, you know, I was so nervous to meet you. I was what? like... <laughs> I was like, oh, I know him from Instagram. And I was like, okay, let me walk up. I'm just going to be polite. Tell him I follow him, you know. And that was it. You, But you were you were so kind and so nice. Y'all know what's so funny? <laughs> Social media is such a weird thing because it's like you're so huge. Like, you're really huge. Like, you're a super big deal. And it's hilarious because, like, I saw you on Instagram and it, like social media is a weird place where you can look at someone on one social media platform and that's not their platform. Yeah. And so they're like, sometimes people can judge who, who someone is or even judge the level of value they bring based off of you giving, based off of you viewing them on a platform. Just that one. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I was like, okay, cool. And I heard a few other people tell me about you and they say, yo, like she's really impactful, all of this. And I was looking at your content and at first I was like, okay, is she like, like new to doing content? I was like, why is she not bigger? And I was so confused. And then I saw you on LinkedIn. And I said, oh. <laughs> so as much as she's saying, like, she thinking I'm cool and I'm popping and stuff. She way more popping than me. Do not, do not let the humility fool y'all. Uh, so very excited. Very grateful for you to be here. For you to take time out of your life. Take a trip to come out here uh, to be on a podcast. So y'all make sure y'all tune in because... This is going to be so impactful of an interview for y'all. We're going to talk about stuff we've never talked about before. And uh, yep. so very grateful to have you here for us to have this discussion. Yes. Thank yeah. you. I'm excited to be here. Um, it was a quick flight here. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, time to come out to Atlanta. I don't think I've been here for like three years. Yeah. Dang. So, yeah. It's about that time. <laughs> that time. All right. Let's get to it. So Oracle, Microsoft, and Salesforce. Mm -hmm. These are all centi-billion dollar tech giants. It's most people's in tech dream to one day be at one of these companies. Mm. You have been at all three of these companies. So want to know, like, first off, how are you able to do that? And what can people learn from you to be able to put themselves on a trajectory to have such an impressive resume themselves? Yeah, um, I wanted to add in. I was also contracted at Google, so I just oh, want to, I, you know. Okay. I ain't know if it, okay. <laughs> they had forgot about that. Sprinkle, but sprinkle. Not, not to brag, but to show that you can do it as well. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things for me is being able to um, let people know that they, I come from an underrepresented background. Mm -hmm. I'm a black female, and I was able to do it and be in those spaces. But one of the most important things is you have to take control of your network. You yeah. have to network, and that's going to be the biggest thing yeah i know a lot of people talk about how they're really shy they're introverts um you know not really big on networking or reaching out to people yeah but that was one of the biggest things that got me into the places that i that i was in mm -hmm. um talking to people networking to people picking up on nuggets as i did coffee chats with different people yeah and i think that's one of the most important things and that's how you get into these different spaces yeah yo that's so good i think about I see so many people get in tech, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen this 10 times more than I have, but I see so many people get in tech, and they do the right things to get in the industry. You know, they'll, they'll network, they will, you know, make sure that their resume is, is up to date. They'll do mm -hmm. all the things they need to do. They'll be on LinkedIn, and then they get their job, mm -hmm. and then they kind of start to kick their feet up a bit. And maybe they're still, you know, doing their thing at their job, or maybe they're not, but they stop that networking piece. Yeah. And Dangerous. Yeah, how important do you think it is for people to continue doing the things that got them there to maintain? Very important. Yeah. Um, I'm, I know firsthand how that can be taken away from you. Yeah. I, you know, I was laid off um, and was had to pick back up. Yeah. Had to pick up my brand. I know we'll probably talk about it a little bit later, but mm -hmm. 
it's super important for people to still continue to do those things because that can be taken away. Mm -hmm. You're just a a number there at that company. Mm -hmm. And it's important for you to continue to build up yourself and build up your brand and your network as well. Yeah. Not just within your company as well, like outside and other companies too, because that, that, that can be harmful if you just know people where you're at. I think about, because I know some people, like you mentioned earlier, some people are like, oh, I don't want to do the networking or I'm shy. Mm-hmm. And I think, and I, I've had to learn this and I'm learning, I'm still learning this, but I think most people don't realize kind of the, the level, the level of game that you're playing at once you start getting into certain ballparks of, of numbers, of money mm-hmm. and a certain industries. And I think about like sports players, for example, or lawyers, you know, that are looking to move up. And it's like people that are in these six-figure industries, right. some seven-figure industries, but these people tend to have to do more than just the job. Like we look at a Kobe versus a, you know, some just other basketball player that's probably really good, you know, but it's like Kobe did more. He did more in terms of the work that he put in, but he also mm-hmm. did more in terms of the relationships that he built in his specific industry Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we could look across the board serena williams and and we could look at look at different athletes or we could look at people that have been leaders uh, whether in in politics or whatever field and one thing we see is that they network they built relationships and and i think that when I, i listened to what you said it made me think about that where it's like i think most of us who aren't used to being at at certain levels we're just thinking okay all it takes is just to do x y and z to get there but it shouldn't take all of that to be able to maintain or be able to thrive Mm. what's a mindset shift or something you could give the people that you think would give them a mindset shift for them to understand the the value uh, but also the opportunity that's there for them in this type of field yeah i think the biggest thing is you have to make sure that you are covered in all spaces Mm -hmm. and i think what that means is you can't just focus on the core work unfortunately Mm -hmm. You have to be able to, to get out, get yeah. out there and step out. And it can be at a level of comfort for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there was this big thing going around about how, why do I have to be an influencer on LinkedIn in order to stand out? Mm-hmm. Like that's been a big topic right now. And it's like, you don't necessarily have to be an influencer. Mm-hmm. Standing out and able in order to get a job, standing out in order to get a job has always been a thing. Mm -hmm. Like you uh, just imagine when we were back when we were trying to get jobs at the mall. Right. We'll take Mm -hmm. the application up, ask to speak to the manager like that was a way of you standing out. And it still has to be a thing. Um, I think that there uh, there are advantages that come with kind of having like a bigger brand or Mm -hmm. standing out and things like that. Um, But I even just take. Tech sourcing, for example, the space mm-hmm. that I'm in, anyone could get behind a computer and source and find candidates. Mm-hmm. But it takes you doing that extra, building up your network to go out to conferences, go out to networking events, mm-hmm. Mixer Cloud, um, things like that in order to meet other people and network in those spaces. So when you do need to reach out to those people or when they need to reach out to you, there's a connection there. Yeah. You know, oh, you got, you got my mind. You got like the wheels turning <laughs> in my head. We, we, we're going to get to some more of this stuff later on. Uh, let's kind of keep on track. So now we talk often about using transferable skills uh, to be able to get in tech. Mm-hmm. But what does that actually look like? I've, I've said it plenty of times. I'll say hey, use your transferable skills. Mm-hmm. And it's almost kind of become a bit of a, a buzz phrase in a way. But it's like, what does that actually look like to use transferable skills? And what are some examples of using transferable skills and experience when targeting specific roles at specific tech companies? Yeah. Um, so first off, transferable skills are real. <laughs> so it's like you know, one of my um, little taglines. I want yeah. people to know that. Um, and I want people to know that I cater to an audience of people that I want to use their transferable skills to get into the tech space because mm-hmm. that's what I did. I've used my transferable skills to move around within a tech space. So yeah. I want to know, I want to let people know that I'm here for them when it comes to that. Um, I always use the example for myself of transitioning from tech sales into tech recruiting. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of the main example that I use. And some of the transferable skills that I needed um, to make that transition was being able to talk to people, being able to have good intros. Um, my my best transferable skill is storytelling. Um, when it comes to 
telling a story or telling some type of customer success story to a client Mm -hmm. um, that I was selling to. It's the same thing when it comes to recruiting. Mm -hmm. I have to be able to talk about um, different success stories within the company and Mm -hmm. how you can come and you can make an impact in the company. So those things are transferable. Metrics. I think were a really big thing. Being yeah. able to achieve metrics in a, in a quarterly way, um, it's the same thing. Uh, when you, when you, being able to achieve quarterly metrics in sales is the same as being able to achieve those metrics or those hires in recruiting. Yeah. And so I, those are kind of like the main things that I would say. And another, just one thing that I like to tell all the clients and people that I work with, go through a job description and look at the requirements. Okay. Go through there. Go, go through those requirements and see what you already know, mm-hmm. and then see what you may have to learn or uh, study. Mm-hmm. And then that's kind of how you know what your transferable skills are already. Yeah. And then the ones that you don't know, you take the time out to learn those studies, take some courses and, and figure those out. Um, mm-hmm. But you know what the transferable skills are that you have because you're aiming towards that particular job role. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's the advice I would give. What would... So what would you what advice would you give to someone who says, okay, Christy, this is good information. Mm-hmm. I can go to a company, I can look at the the job description, the information that I don't know. Okay, cool. I can go ahead and, and study on that, get some certifications on that. But I'm looking across at a hundred different companies. And I'm seeing a lot of them have the same type of of requirements Mm -hmm. and a lot of them have requirements that are completely different from the others. Do I just go ahead and get a certification in everything, everything from every single individual company Mm -hmm. or how, like, how do I balance out my time and my life and and determine which Mm -hmm. certifications might be the most uh, important or most appropriate for me to pursue? Yeah, I think you need to have more of a target of the type of job or industry that you want to be in. Yeah. I tell people to look at the different companies that they are interested in and then do a coffee chat with the person that is in that exact role that you mm. want to be in. That is how you're going to learn more about the environment, the role, and how it is to work at that particular company. Mm-hmm. And so that once you kind of do that, you'll get a feel of... Like what you like about that company, and mm. if you you can add that to your target list. Yeah, yo, that's so good. That's that's so important. Yeah, because I think when I was first getting in tech, that was something that kind of threw me for a curveball because I did a boot camp, mm-hmm. and it was pretty helpful. But what I started noticing was I was like, yo, like these companies, a lot of them are asking for extra stuff that I don't have. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. after a while, what I started to notice was I started to pick up on a pattern of certain certifications that companies would constantly mention. As so, as a solutions engineer and many other roles, you know, Salesforce certifications kept coming up, and for, mm-hmm. for obvious reasons, you know, Salesforce being the, the number one uh, CRM and, and amongst other things. And so I kept seeing that and I was like, okay, so I need to go ahead and I need to get some type of education with Salesforce, yeah. you know, and then I, I started noticing a pattern with a few different things and I was like, okay, well, I don't have the time to do everything. So let me see what is consistently coming up yeah. and then kind of focus on that. So I actually forgot about that until you gave that answer. And I was like, yo, that's actually crazy. Mm-hmm. That's what I started to uh, pick up on. And so, but I'm um, happy that you shared that. Under, there are a lot of people that just felt overwhelmed and wouldn't know which direction to go with that. Yeah. So, uh, a girl told me recently, this actually was pretty crazy, Mm -hmm. and it's a true story, y'all, this is actually really crazy. Eventually, I'm going to do a a career conversation interview with her so y'all can hear her story, but she, uh, so she actually did one of the boot camps that I recommend. She got a job in tech, about almost a year went by, she ended up losing her job. It was some crazy story Mm -hmm. uh, where she was at an event got into it with or not got into it but her manager thought she was talking about about him but she wasn't somebody was talking about her manager Uh, and she was kind of like being like yo stop chill out but the manager thought that she was talking about him with the person so when they got back to work you know they found a reason to fire her Mm -hmm. literally as soon as they got back to work Mm -hmm. and so she was sad you know she got fired at 8 30 (laughs) a.m so she lost her job 8 30 a.m at 11 a.m., another company reached out to her and gave her an offer. Amazing. So for two and a half hours, she was without a job. Mm-hmm. And for two and a half hours, she was depressed. And then she got, not just got a new offer, but she got an offer that was $10,000 more than what she was already making. So automatically, it changed to where she was happy. 
And when she told me this story, it made me realize that, you know, most people are not fearing being laid off. Most people are really just fearing going from a six figure income to being broke. That's really what their fear is. Not really the the thought of, oh, am I going to lose my job? But it's Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else lined up. Yeah. How does someone having a professional career brand help them have more backup offers lined up? And what tips would you give to others looking to build their career brand? Yeah, um, I think this one is super important because this is li- that's literally kind of how I felt whenever yeah. I went through my layoff process. Mm-hmm. And I, first thing I want to say is a lot of people that I'm helping to get into the tech space are from underrepresented groups. Mm-hmm. So think about it. We go, we start making all of this money and, you know, we, we feel really good. We feel really yeah. comfortable. And the idea that that could be gone is like wow right and so um i definitely feel uh, the the whole idea of like okay we're going back to where we started you know yeah. <laughs> that's where we started but i think the biggest thing is to always have something that is for you something that no one else can take away from you give me higher yeah. christy is something that no one else could take away from me and yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of that and i want people to have something like that <laughs> I don't want people to think that they have to be a big brand influencer. Yeah. That's what I don't want. I mm-hmm. want people to be comfortable within their spaces and do something that they love to do. I love mm-hmm. helping people. I love um, being able to point people in the right direction, mm-hmm. having a big network and just knowing, so, oh, oh, I know somebody. I know a recruiter for this. I know a recruiter at that company. I know a recruiter at that company. And that to me is part of my brand and so the advice that I would give someone is just to to have something that's yours Mm -hmm. um build on something that's yours and have a catch line have a catchphrase give me higher Christy okay I got you like have something that is unique to you Mm -hmm. um and that is what is going to keep you going during that time give me higher Christy kept me going and it built and it grew um during my time of the layoffs and I knew at that point I didn't have to have a big company behind me yeah. to go and have different speaking engagements or to make money, to continue to make money. Mm-hmm. I just knew that that was mine. Yeah. For everyone interested in taking advantage of what's being discussed, you already know that we have the resources to help you. All you need to do is text us at 404-519-2851 or just click the link in the description or on the video and the Tech is New Black team will assist you with this or anything else. You know, low key, I kind of think it's not even that you've had the opportunity to be at all these big companies. I low key think they all are like just trying to like have you because <laughs> the fact that you've been mm-hmm. at all these companies. And of course, I'm yeah. saying that jokingly, but at mm-hmm. the same way, just kind of just highlighting uh, just the what you've done in your career mm-hmm. and just highlighting like just just your your success and also your success in helping so many different people. And so let's talk about Give Me Hired Christy. So. Yeah. Love the brand. It's incredible. It's been impacting a lot of people. What is Get Me Hired Christy? And how were you able to build out the brand in such a successful way? Yeah. So Get Me Hired Christy um, is a platform, a brand that (laughs) connects job seekers with entry level roles and roles where you can use your transferable skills. Um, I am very big on helping people from marginalized communities get into the tech space. And I believe that getting into the tech space, finding an entry level role will help you gain financial freedom. And that is what my people need. That is what has helped me. Um, I grew up in Pleasant Grove, Texas, (laughs) um, in the hood of Pleasant Grove and was able to kind of built this pathway out for myself, go to college for free, um, get be be in the tech space for seven years now, mm-hmm. transition into a new area of the tech space. And I have went through these different barriers and I want people um, to have it easier yeah. than, than it was for me. Mm-hmm. I don't want them to have to worry about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was the basis behind Get Me Hired Christy. It originally started off, <laughs> so funny, it originally started off back in, um, 2021, mm-hmm. kind of during COVID time when recruiting was popping, like yeah. everybody was hiring recruiters. It was great. Yeah. Um, and I saw all these opportunities. I have a, my biggest network is on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, a lot of uh, black and brown people aren't on LinkedIn for some reason. And, that's, and I'm working on helping people with that as well. Yeah. Um, but I saw that they were on Instagram, they were on TikTok. And I was like, okay, let me put these opportunities that I'm seeing in my network 
on Instagram and TikTok. And yeah. so that is kind of where it came. I started posting lots of recruiting jobs like, hey, y'all, these, these are on LinkedIn. Put in a LinkedIn link, hoping that people will see like, okay, now I need to create a LinkedIn because these jobs are on there. Yeah. And so that was kind of the beginning of it. But then it spread to something much bigger as far yeah. as just like entry level and transferable roles. Was it, at what point did it become intentional for it to be the size that it is now? Because I'm sure when you first started, because usually whenever we start something, usually we just started just because we're trying to bring a solution um, to Correct. a problem. Mm -hmm. And we, we think, okay, yeah, it'll become this. But then oftentimes we're like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. I didn't know it was going to become all of this. Yeah. No. At what point did it shift from, hey, I'm just trying to do this thing to help some people to, okay, yo, this is like a real thing. This is a whole <laughs> movement that's going on. Yeah. And I really need to serve it like like it's, you know, like it's my baby, like it's my child. Mm -hmm. And at w what point did that shift happen? And how did you have to grow and evolve as a person? Because, I mean, again, you, mm -hmm. you were, you know, in, in tech sales, became a, uh, a talent sourcer, mm -hmm. leading in the recruitment space in these uh, different amazing companies. And those are all great. But that's entirely different from being mm -hmm. able to to have a brand. Like it's a people think this that stuff is easy, and like the brand thing is not an easy thing no. at all. And so, at what point did you notice that the shift was happening, and what needed to change about you in order for you to be able to be successful with the Get Me Hired Christie brand? Yes. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing that changed, uh, well, the pivotal moment that changed for me was when people started reaching out for one-on-one -on -one help. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing. And I'm like, oh, wait, like, I, I, I'm working and I'm screening for my day job. And then I have to figure out this whole thing for Give Me Hire Christy, which I call my night job, my, you know, my part-time. <laughs> and so um, I had to get organized. Mm -hmm. I had to rearrange my time because there were people outside of just my nine to five that were asking for my help mm -hmm. and I needed to prioritize that as well. Yeah. And so the, I had to, I had to be more organized. Yeah. That was the main thing for me. What, uh, do you have any employees or virtual assistants or anything? <laughs> No, actually, so wow. I, I was, I do everything on my own. Whoa. And yeah, I do everything on my own. That's impressive. Um, thank you. I don't want to do everything on my own. Um, I actually saw something that you, you um, had posted like on Instagram, how mm -hmm. you like hired a virtual assistant. Yeah. I like started looking into it just to yeah. like do posts or like to cut things up and things like that. But I don't know. It's just, it's so tough to trust someone with my baby and like uh, let's, posting. Let's, <laughs> let's talk offline yeah. uh, because I mean, th the fact that your brand is what it is and you're doing this by yourself, like I, I, I wouldn't be half of, of the stuff I'm doing if, if it was just me. And the fact that you're doing in many ways, much more than what I'm doing just by yourself that's incredibly impressive. Okay. Shouts out to you. Y'all give her her flowers <laughs> in the comments. Cause she going in. I'm thinking she got a whole, you know, a whole. Uh, Y'all remember that, uh, that that what was it in Men in Black when uh, there was some some uh, some giant dude or something and they opened it up and it was like them little aliens inside like operated. I'm thinking it's like a whole operation machine mm -hmm. going on behind the scenes. So that's impressive. But but also it also shows like man like so much more could be done, could be done. and with, with your Good brand scale. so yeah let's definitely uh talk offline because at the end of the day yeah. it's about the, the bigger you become the more people you can help the more of our sure. community is helped overall so so I'm I'm, I'm excited about that because yeah. you know, oh, it's, it's about to be crazy it's about to be up it's about to be up I love it so much uh, so that's fire now what things have you had to learn about I guess business, because essentially mm -hmm. it is a business. What have you had to learn about business or had to pay more attention to that even goes beyond the influencer, but it's like, okay, this is actual kind of like business stuff now. Mm -hmm. um, I would say kind of like the messages I get. I get mm -hmm. a high volume of messages, especially on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, and it's important for me to try to respond to everyone, everyone as soon as I can. Yeah. Um, but I had to kind of come up with a tactic. I had to create templates for myself for yeah. when people are reaching out. So that was kind of another thing. Um, I had to get a business account. I had mm -hmm. to get a business email, yeah. like different things <laughs> like that. Like you can't just be, you know, um, so that people can reach out to me. I had to create a media kit. Yeah. Um, people started to reach out and, and, 
and connect and want me to kind of promote and do things for them. And so mm-hmm. um, that was kind of the mindset, like, oh, this is real. Yeah. Like, this is real. So um, I, I turned into business, get me hired, Christy. Yeah. And and that's what it is. And so I'm, I'm excited and I, I love being in this space. And mm-hmm. I love what I do and just excited to see it grow. Man, I love that so much. Look, y'all, for, for those of y'all that are hosting uh, tech events in the future, definitely uh, tap in with uh, with Christy to have her speak. Um, I, as y'all can see, like she's amazing at speaking. She's a wealth of knowledge. She also has an amazing brand as well. So off top, people are going to pull up to your event. So you definitely want to do that. Um, but yeah, for everybody else, just everybody in general, you know, let us know like in the comments, like what has she shared so far that's resonated with you? Or for those that have been following her for a while, like what are some nuggets that she's giving you, value that she's giving you that has really impacted you the most? Uh, the purpose is really your comment can be something that somebody else can see that's from her information that can impact them and help them. It's all about all of us being a community. Uh, so let us know. Also, make sure y'all leaving a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, because the more you like it, it tells the algorithm, hey, people like this video so we're going to show it to more people so more people can see it more people could be blessed and so um all right now one of our guests said this this quote before it and the quote was instagram is for the show mm-hmm. linkedin is for the dough okay and you know what's funny when i was at the tech event i was at yesterday this girl came up to me and she uh I probably shouldn't word it that way. I wasn't gonna word it. Say she like opened up her jacket at me. That probably would keep sound. <laughs> no, uh, so she opened up her jacket to show her shirt that that had that on there. It's like mm-hmm. Instagram's for the show, LinkedIn is for the dog. Okay, okay. And she was like, I saw them episode and got this shirt made. <laughs> and uh, that's such a very real thing. But a lot of people love to make content on Instagram mm-hmm. and TikTok because they're hoping for brand deals. They're hoping for, mm-hmm. you know, to go viral. They don't, most people don't even know what go, what comes behind going viral. Just, I just want to sure. go viral just because of the dopamine hits. Mm-hmm. You know, we realize, okay, going viral just to go viral is kind of empty. It's like there needs to be uh, something behind that. But mm-hmm. anyway, a lot of people want to go viral on those platforms but they only see LinkedIn as a place to get a job, not realizing the massive brand deals that are on LinkedIn. Can you share a range of the amount of money that someone can make in brand deals on LinkedIn and how they can set themselves up to eventually be able to get brand deals? Of course. Um, LinkedIn is one of my favorite platforms. I was about to say, <laughs> give, give me brand deals, Christy. <laughs> Okay, I got you. <laughs> I got you. Um, LinkedIn is my favorite platform when it comes to brand deals. Now, I will mm-hmm. say the amount of influence and being able to be an influencer on LinkedIn is different. Mm-hmm. I do think um, it, it. I think it's a little bit easier to be an influencer when it I comes so to too. yeah. On um, well, I, I think it's a little bit easier to be to do it on TikTok or Instagram. Yeah, okay. I feel like you have to have some type of expertise or some type of niche yeah. knowledge when it comes to LinkedIn. Um, yeah. That's what yeah, that's what I think. Um, but let's talk about the money. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's, let's talk get about to the money. It. So. The idea behind it, when I talk to the group, the little group of influencer, LinkedIn influencer friends that I have, mm-hmm. you're supposed to charge 1% of your following. Okay. So if I'm currently at 200,000 followers, mm-hmm. um, I'm supposed to charge per post $2,000. Okay. So that can give you kind of a range. Yeah. Now, last year was my first year kind of really getting into it, um, mm-hmm. getting paid to do things. And people reach out to you based off of the posts that you've done before, based mm-hmm. off the things that you have shared before. Yeah. So that's why it's important to really share about your niche, share what you're passionate about, share what, you're, what, what projects you're working on when it comes in these spaces on LinkedIn so that people mm-hmm. could see because they may want you to promote something or they may ask you to, to do something um, on LinkedIn for them. Yeah. Um, so last year I made about 15000 on LinkedIn mm-hmm. um, in brand deals and that was just me just yeah. kind of starting off. The, yeah. and testing then, the waters. <laughs> testing the waters. Um, and then in my first quarter, so this first quarter um, up until March, I'm projecting to make 15000 on LinkedIn. And so Dang. that is just an idea. But I don't yeah. say any of this to brag. I, yeah. I say this because I want others to be able to do this yes. as well. Yeah. Um, that is all that I've been trying to do. Damn. I want people to be able to do the same thing and have the same opportunities as me. Yeah. Like, let my whole idea has been, let me break into it. Let me get a feel for it as a black woman 
and and then have others follow and teach others how to do it as well. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's been it. If you're looking to break into tech, scale in your tech career, or get networking, collaboration, resources, and more, I have something huge for you. Tech is a New Black is the largest tech career platform in the world. We've helped over a thousand people break into six-figure tech careers and even more scale. But now we're taking it even further with our Techpreneur Discord community. This community offers high-level networking and collaboration with tech leaders, tech recruiters, and more through events, private streams, and daily group conversations. And if you're looking to break into tech, we don't just have all of the trainings and resources that you need, but we actually have partnerships with different companies that are hiring from within our community. So no matter your goal and your career, income, or business, the Techpreneur community was made for you. So text us at 404-519-2851 or just hit the link in the description to join. That's, Yo, that's so fire because I think most people, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, like y'all let me know in the comments if, if y'all agree or disagree, but I think most people when they think about getting brand deals or getting sponsorships or whatever on social media, I don't think that most people are actually thinking, okay, hey, there's a company that is looking to make profits, looking to make revenue, they're looking to sell a service or a product to someone. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a leisurely service or product or whether it's something that actually gives like, you know, real tangible necessary value to people. And so, but most social media platforms, no one is really on there for business reasons. You mm -hmm. know, most people are not like, I'm on social media to make some type of transaction or some type of per a purchase or subscribe to some service. Mm -hmm. But that's not really the case on LinkedIn. LinkedIn right. is a business, career, corporate, mm -hmm. entrepreneurial type of platform. So the energy, the culture on LinkedIn, it's almost like on Instagram, whenever I... I've seen, I don't even know if Instagram does this anymore, uh, but I, whenever I've seen videos on Instagram, I'll be like 20 minute videos. Like it's like a video, even if it's a podcast and people mm -hmm. are talking, I'm like, ooh, a 20 minute video. I'm like, I ain't about to watch it, that's crazy. <laughs> but then I'll be on YouTube and I'll see a 45 minute video and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and click I'm on that, watch, watch it, that. Yeah. And it's like, it could be the same video, but it's just because being on a separate platform, it's it, it's the culture. Mm -hmm. It's like I literally was, was just in uh, I was literally this week in, in London and Dubai and, and of course being back here in the States and I'm like yo it's so crazy how just the culture like in, in Dubai it's really interesting to me because the people like they, they'll be all up on you like they'll mm -hmm. be you know if somebody's walking past you on the street like it's common here that usually people will get Step as up. far away from you mm -hmm. as possible but there, it's like they would have a whole lot of space and they would literally, I'm thinking they walking up to me. I'm like, what you doing? They just like walking past me. <laughs> or people stand close to you if you're close to them. Like, it's like they don't feel awkward or weird or they don't have this whole, yo, you're my personal space. Mm -hmm. They're just very kind of com communal and like, okay, like we're, we're all people, you know, we just here chilling. And, and it's, I can go on about London as well and all these different factors, but it's so interesting. It's like social media is the same way where mm -hmm. it's like one platform is different than the other. And I think that's one thing that people don't realize about the culture of LinkedIn and also the, the, the way you can get brand deals and, yeah. and, and how the brand deals might have a, a bit more value and be different. What would you sure. say to someone who is like, hey, look, I'm good on LinkedIn. I got a job in tech. I'm straight. You know, but they do want brand deals and sponsorships and they're like, okay, look, humor me. What's the value of me actually being on LinkedIn? Like, mm -hmm. would I actually start to enjoy it? Is it like an awkward platform? Like, what would you share with that person? Um, I would say to that person to make it your own space. Yeah. Create your own space on LinkedIn. I think mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. Um, when people come to my page, they know they're coming to see Get Me Higher Christy content. Mm -hmm. they, they know what type of content that I, that I produce. I talk about transferable skills. I mm -hmm. motivate job seekers. Yeah. Um, and usually with my brand deals, they're tools that help job seekers in the job search process. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I would say make it your own space. Make it yours so that it is enjoyable yeah. for you. Um, that would be my biggest advice for them. Yeah, I think this is so good because people don't realize the different types of really just bags that they can make mm -hmm. where it's like, I mean, because because realistically, let's say, you know, just and I want I want to highlight what she mentioned earlier. OK, 
you know, Lord willing, you know, everything goes according to plan. Let's say, okay, it's 15 K per quarter this year. That's 60,000 a year. That's more money than the average American makes. Yeah. That's to give perspective. That's more money than the average, even white male American makes a year. And that's just aside from your job in tech. And people are making more than that. I have have friends that are making more than that and they may have a little bit bigger following than me or, um, you know, been in the game for a a much longer time or have just more of a niche niche area. And that's just me. And I don't even think that I'm making, you know, the amount that I could be making. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, um, definitely. so, um, I would just say like, there's a lot of money out there and yeah. I want people to be able to tap into everything. Yeah. You're, you're going to be so, so, so huge because I, I love the way you're going about it where you're not like just jumping off the porch trying to be like, hey, give me all of this money, but mm-hmm. you're really like slowly building it, showing your value. These companies are going to like in the future when you give them so much value. Mm -hmm. And then as you start to either raise your prices or start to request more, then they're going to be like, yeah, like it's better to like have those relationships locked in Mm -hmm. and then ask for more later versus, you know, going to new people saying, Hey, I'm asking for this much. And they're like, yo, we don't know you. We haven't worked with you. Yeah. Like we don't really know if we're going to get an ROI. So the way you're going about doing it, is I had to learn that wise. too. I had to learn kind of how to build those type of relationships and maintain. Mm-hmm. Um, cause one of my biggest partners, I've been working with them for forever, you mm-hmm. know, and then now I'm, you know, I'm getting paid what I, what I would like to get paid. But yeah. I had to think about some of the new brand partnerships. Like they don't really know. They, they see the amount of followers, they see the yeah. likes the impressions, um, but they don't really know me like that right and so it's it's having to build those relationships I think are very important how do you because obviously this is a a new venture for you Mm -hmm. not brand new but it's it's relatively new Mm -hmm. how do you implement your knowledge as a recruiter whether it's from finding deals and or negotiating deals the same way that you of course coach people on um excuse me talent sourcer Mm -hmm. but the same way that you coach people on finding roles and negotiating the salary or negotiating different benefits have you been implementing those skills into what you're doing now and like how have you been doing that yeah absolutely i think is the most important part is trying to figure out what is the problem Mm -hmm. Um, that that brand or that tool is having um, and how can you as as the person solve it like how can I solve it for you Mm -hmm. Um, most of the time it comes with okay we have a tool for job seekers to simplify the process Mm -hmm. right they need to get it out to more people they need more diverse people to use their product or tool and so um, they come to me because I have a diverse audience Mm -hmm. Um, and I present the tool and then there you have it you have people that have trusted me have followed me in in the process I've helped them before and Mm -hmm. they're like hey you know this let's try this product out Um, because I presented to them it's the same thing with talent sourcing as well now I don't do much of the negotiation on the on the back end i do a mm-hmm. lot of the um front end work yeah. um, i pull the candidate in um so kind of like what i'm doing with brand deals i pull them in some type of way with mm-hmm. my writing or um, my knowledge and i present you know what the problem is hey this company needs someone that can build out um, a b and c yeah. and i saw you as the perfect person and so i take that candidate and guide them through the process and it's kind of the same thing with whatever brand or tool i'm working with i'll pull them in through the process and then kind of guide them all the way till we reach the solution of having more of a diverse audience um, use the tool. I love this so much. Like this gets me so hyped because I think about all the different opportunities that are in this space and what all can be done. And a lot of it is so untapped. Mm -hmm. Like this is a, I mean, just, just as as you would uh, put down the, in the, uh, the notes and we were kind of going over the discussion, it's like, this is a bit of a, untapped market Mm -hmm. and we're kind of building out a new market in a new space and it's it's really exciting to see that there there really is no blueprint for what it is that you're doing so it's really dope that you're building out this blueprint do you think in the future once you're at a place where you're like yo i feel like i have the whole blueprint mapped out that it will be something that you would offer as like a course or a service to others 
Um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I think once I start to scale and grow, I want to teach people. So I'm just yeah. kind of teach pe- people can learn just from watching the videos or things like that. I think it is something that I do want to plan and kind of build out and have others really have the information in front of them. So I do think so. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is LinkedIn, with it being such a new space, they're learning as well. Recently, yeah. they, so before then, you know, we didn't have to put sponsored or we didn't have to put hashtags or you mm-hmm. didn't have to mention that you were getting paid for that post, but people started calling it out. And so now LinkedIn has a brand sponsorship toggle that you have to put on if you are getting paid for that post or if there's some type of affiliate. Um, and so, Things are kind of just evolving as yeah. we grow and learn. And I think, um, yeah, I, I definitely think it would be something that I would love to teach people. Yeah. We're um, we're evolving predominantly out of uh, affiliate relationships uh, because a few reasons. But one of the reasons, specifically the reason that benefits our community is that we don't want our community thinking that if we encourage them to do something, it's because there is a monetary incentive behind it. Yeah. You know, so let's say there's a boot camp or something. So most of the boot camps that we actually promote, uh, and this is my first time saying this uh, publicly, uh, most of the boot camps we promote, we've actually exited uh, affiliate relationships with them. And now we, I'm not going to say exactly like how the relationship works now, but uh, basically we're just paid a set amount now just in general just as we generally recommend them Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter more or less if we're telling this person to do their boot camp versus this person to do that boot camp Uh, we kind of have it set up to where it's a more set amount so that way because we want it to remove in people's minds okay you telling me to do this boot camp because you're going to get an affiliate kickback for doing it and we always try to be transparent say look we're going to get an affiliate kickback for this but understand we could partner with any boot camp and Mm -hmm. do the same thing but we're choosing this boot camp because we actually believe in what it is that they're that they're doing Mm-hmm. Um, as a as a talent sourcer mm-hmm. in your space, how do you? And this would be good for other talent sources and recruiters. Mm-hmm. And this is a two part question. These are actually two extremely ap- <laughs> apart in terms of questions. So one, how do you navigate what relationships to collaborate with and be able to share with your audience? It's like you're like a, you know, almost like a. I don't even know what animal to use, but it's like you're like a, a mother. You know, like a mother bear and you mm-hmm. have all of these cubs mm-hmm. that are following you mm-hmm. that are like, you know, little cubs. Give me higher Christy. Mm-hmm. Help me out. It's like like how do you navigate? OK, what relationships to associate with mm-hmm. to then offer to your community versus which ones not to? And then the second question mm-hmm. is you're doing a lot. You know, you're at working in big tech. You have a big brand. You have two really big behemoth things that you have going on. How are you able to do this and also be able to kind of woosah, relax, mm. relieve yourself of stress, take care of Christy? So, again, two extremely gotcha. different yeah. questions, <laughs> uh, but still wanted to, to hear your perspective on both of those. Of course. Um, and thank you for asking. Thank you for asking how I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you, how you <laughs> how doing? How you doing? Um, yeah. So, th- to answer the first question, I think it's super important. I love all my, my baby cubs. I, yeah. I, never call, <laughs> I never called my audience that. I love my audience. And yeah. I, I, I have very close relationships with a lot of the people that I've helped out before. Mm-hmm. And so, it's really important to me that whatever I bring to them is going to be something that can help that can help for real. And so I've turned down different brand deals because either a of the cost, the cost of what my audience will have to pay. I just, I can't support it. Um, for me coming from the background that I come from underrepresented background, not having any money. Um, I just think about myself. And so, I've turned down brand deals because of cost. I've turned down just because I just didn't necessarily believe in a product or it just, you know, it wasn't the right fit. It wasn't the right alignment. Um, And so I think that's important when it do, when it does come to affiliates that at the end of the day, my audience knows that I'm going to present them with something that I truly have backed up or believe in and Mm -hmm. that I can teach you myself how to use it. Yeah. That's good. Um, And so, that's one thing. Yeah. Um, it is a lot, I would say. And it's like, dang, you know, I really would like to have that money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, it's not about that. Yeah. I've, I always wanted something that was bigger than me mm-hmm. um, and my audience and the reach and um, everything else is, is bigger than me. And so that's important to me that, that it stays that way. Yeah. And then when it comes to 
How you doing? How, how, you, how you handling all of it? <laughs> It can be a lot. Um, yeah. I actually had to take a break. I know you guys reached out to me in December, um, and I wasn't on Instagram. I wasn't on TikTok. I took a break from everything because it, it had just become a lot, and I made yeah. a big post. I was like, hey, y'all, I'm going to be out for a little bit. I'm going on vacation. I don't know when I'm coming back. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it comes down to really just organizing your time. That's mm-hmm. the biggest thing. Um, know what comes first. Y'all know my job comes first. And it, to me, it's a good thing that my two jobs align with each other. Um, I am able to learn different tips and tricks and, and different use different tools that will allow people to get into big tech. Yeah. And so I think that it aligns perfectly. Um, and what I'm learning, um, as I'm working in my day job are, are better resources, better things to help people, um, to help everybody. Yeah. And so I think that's the, the biggest thing for me. But I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm fine. Um, it's, it just could be a lot, but I take the breaks when needed. Yeah. Um, but that's I'm good. always, I always want to help people. So I'm always just kind of looking. But scheduling my time is the biggest thing that yeah. I had struggled with, but I'm getting better at it. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's so good. And look, it's going to be even better when you get some good VAs. <laughs> Just able to handle a lot of stuff for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on Tech is a New Black. Thank you for having me. Yeah. This is great.